do you set rules for your kids in, when they start dating? Yeah. It's a wise thing to do, set rules. Uh, but the rules that um, that, that woman, um, that mother, <laughs> that Kardashian lady, the, the rules that, that reportedly she has made for her daughter aren't probably the rules that we would make for our daughters. Um, okay, rule number one, allegedly, um, their date must, must make at least six figures. <laughs> Already it's off to a bad start. I mean, you know, every mother would love to say that to their daughter because most mothers want their daughters to marry well, right? But the more you say to kids, you know, the more they rebel. And then instead of going out with a guy who makes six figures, they'd rather go out with a beatnik. <laughs> I don't know if people still use that word, but it's a cool <laughs> word, we need to bring it back, a beatnik. Okay, um, also, um, the mother says that she wants her girls date to drive a car that's worth over $50,000. Now, we all want our little girls to be picked up by a man making six figures in a Mercedes, but as soon as you say that to the girls, they go out with a beatnik with a beat-up Volkswagen <laughs> from, from years ago. Uh, another rule that I hear is that uh, the boy must photograph well with her daughter. If the boy Whoa. doesn't photograph well, then he is not the boyfriend. Well. That's why she's called that woman and, 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 and not a mother. Um, anyway, all right. I also heard that um, the mother wants uh, to make sure that the boyfriends, the suitors, uh, will appear on the reality show. Well, now see, this is the only rule that I think makes absolute sense for the Kardashian family, you know what I'm saying? And because they live their life on reality TV, you don't wanna date a guy who's gonna mess up the, the mix. Um, they also have to get the, mother, the mother's approval before French kissing in front of, in, in front of paparazzi. I don't know why you all are shocked. Everything about this family is ridiculous. So, you know, this, this just kind of, you know, falls in line with the rest of the ridiculousness. So I guess there's no chance of marrying like a medical or dating like a medical student at UCLA or something like that. There's no chance of uh, the plumber or, or whatnot. <laughs> ah, they probably don't want to be a Kardashian anyway. Uh, but it seems to be working these rules for um, Jaden Smith. Will and, Will and Jada's uh, son has been seen out with uh, one of the, I get, I get them mixed up. Kendall, Kylie, I get them mixed up, but there's Jaden with one of them. I think that was taken over in London, as a matter of fact. Um, uh, and then here's Harry Styles from One Direction. Did I? Yes, I'm young, I'm young. <laughs> I'm cool. <laughs> One Direction, that's Harry. All the girls love Harry. Yeah. They were originally, arranged. This, this, this was a date arranged, you know, for publicity, but then, you know, the girl ended up falling for Harry, so no word where they are right now, but um, the point is those are the Kardashian dating rules. Um, they didn't say anything about no sex <laughs> on the first date, but they are Kardashian, so. <laughs> on a side note, have you guys heard that Bruce Jenner wants to have surgery to shave down his Adam's apple? Did you hear that? Did you think that this was the first move in him transforming into a woman? Yeah. That, well, that's what I originally thought, except that's not what he's saying. He addressed, I think I was watching TMZ the other day, he said he wants his Adam's apple shaved down because he's never liked it. My, my thing is, that by the time you get to be like 60 years old, Aren't you right with almost everything going on in your life regarding, like that's, that's one of the great things I find about getting older. I'm 49, you know, but what I loved about turning 40 and I couldn't, I kinda couldn't wait for it is that, okay, maybe I'll finally be okay with certain flaws in my life that I really can't change. By 50, I'm okay with those flaws. By 60, <laughs> nobody's shaving Adam's apple and being all, <laughs> being all weird, you know. I'm thinking by 60, you are who you are and you accept yourself wholeheartedly. He's a little womanly in the face, I'll tell you. If you take, a, if you take off that Adam's apple, people are really gonna think something. Um, so, uh, how you doing, Bruce? Um, okay, let's move along. And I wanted to talk with you about two plus size act actresses. Neither one have I met, but we've talked about them before here on Hot Topics, Melissa McCarthy and Rebel Wilson. They've made a really interesting pack and I like their pack. 
The pact is reportedly that each of them, basically the fat girl in Hollywood pact, which I like this, each of them is not going to cave into Hollywood pressure to lose weight. Now, Melissa is an older woman. I think she might be around 40 years old. I know she's married, huh? 43. 43. She's got a good life. You know she's married? She's married? Yes, she's married. She doesn't have to worry about dating around some skinny men in Hollywood trying to judge her. <laughs> I don't know whether she has children, but the point is, is that she's 43 and Rebel's young. Rebel's like 23. What I like about this relationship, you know, and Rebel's from Australia. What I like about their relationship is that it's always nice to know somebody older than you who you can share secrets and, and, and sometimes, sometimes your innermost secrets, which would be, you know, you know, being heavy in Hollywood, it can't possibly be easy. But what they've done though is that they've created a niche for themselves that Gwyneth Paltrow sure can't take. You know, there, there's very little competition uh, when you are a heavier woman. I mean, there, I guess the roles might be limited also, but at least when the roles do come up, uh, you're, you're bound to get it. Um, I think it's smart. Uh, they, they, they are not looking to lose the weight and be just another random skinny white woman in Hollywood. They're, they're going to stay stuck out by being who they are. I like it. I like that. Have you seen uh, Britney Spears on the cover of January's uh, InStyle magazine? I know, I didn't recognize her in the beginning, but that's her. That's Britney. That's Britney. So inside, she admits that she wants a baby girl so she won't feel so alone. Aww. I know. Aww. But kids aren't our friends. <laughs> We're the boss of them. So she won't feel so alone. Well, you see, here's the thing. They keep Britney off the computer so that she doesn't find out what people say about her, which is a smart thing. Like, there's no computer, in the, uh, there's no computer anywhere in the house. She does not have, I guess, the computer hooked up to her telephone, so she never knows. Like, she got kind of lukewarm reviews on the new album that came out. For all she knows, because she's not reading anything, she thinks everything is fabulous, and she only knows stuff that her handlers tell her. So that's kind of good, because you know she's kind of fragile still. <laughs> you know, she doesn't need to be on the computer reading what people say about her, because it's not always good. Um, but anyway, so, uh, so she can't join like a mommy blog, you know? I mean, the computer wasn't really around when I first had Kevin, um, but those mommy blogs, I find that they're pretty helpful, you know, um, as a mother, you know, to go on them. And I'm not sure whether her kids go to a school or whether they're homeschooled, but they're eight and... Eight and seven. Wait, let me read the quote first and then I'll continue. Um, all right, here's what she says. By the way, uh, Deb, how's my audio? Are my earrings clanking and you guys are wondering what's going on? No, sounds good in here. All right, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> what a messy show. Look, <laughs> as a mom, you have all these situations you go through and you're like, what is going on? Is this normal? And then you feel silly for asking questions because you think, I'm a mom, I'm supposed to know these things, but you don't, you're human. To be honest, I wish I had more mom friends. Aww. It's so easy to make mom friends. All you have to do is when you pull up to the school to pick your kid up, as opposed to sitting behind the wheel, you know, listening to, uh, you know, the radio, you get out of the car and you stand with the other moms, you know, in, your, uh, in a mom outfit, like not in something like this, Brittany. <laughs> You gotta have on a mom outfit, you know, like some Levi's and some Uggs, a sweatshirt maybe with a school logo on it. And while you're waiting for the kids, you say, that damn Kevin, it is so cold out here. I hope he wore a hat to school. If he, if he didn't wear a hat to school, hold me back as I crack his skull when he comes out, okay? <laughs> and, then, and then the next mom says, how about mine? Mine has not reminded me for months to put money on, you know how you put money in the lunch account and they, they swipe their credit card? Put money in the lunch account. The school had to call me at work today, so now I seem like a negligent mom. <laughs> and then Brittany, then you go, I know these kids, and you go, I know these kids, and then you go, Brittany, and I say, Wendy. And then you're friends. <laughs> it's, it's easy, it's easy to make mom friends. Poor thing. Well, she's about to start that residency in Vegas, so she's gonna be leaving her kids back in California for whatever kind of schooling they go to. I don't know whether it's homeschool or a school school, but she doesn't want her kids to be caught up in the mayhem of Vegas. I'm gonna be caught up in the mayhem. I'm vowing to see Brittany um, in February. <laughs> yep, I'm going. I'm going. 
So Saturday Night Live is finally hiring that black actress that they've been missing for years. <laughs> they've, they've come under intense pressure because they have uh, no black women in the cast. Remember when uh, Kerry Washington was here, she had to play Oprah and, and, and Beyonce and everybody. And then you know our friend Keenan, he plays, um, he usually plays the black woman on, on the cast. Um, the show, uh, there he is, there, there he is a Shaka Khan. Now you know that doesn't look like Shaka Khan, but he, he's doing the best he can, he's a man. Uh, the show plans on hiring that black actress by January. They were doing auditions secretly last week. I don't know anybody who auditioned, but um, you know, it's been a long time since they've had, you know, who are they? The girls from the audition? Oh, okay. The one with the red looks funny. I mean, we don't know any of them, so you go off who looks funny. And then the one with the white shirt in the back and the side ponytail, she looks funny too. The one in the middle looks like she's taking herself too seriously. <laughs> the one with the blonde hair. I like to see my comedians smiling and laughing all the time. Whenever you don't see them doing that, you think they're up to something. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, uh, good luck to all you black girls. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica Simpson says she's done with acting. That's better than being done with those good, affordable shoes and stuff. I know when I tease the story. Look, when I was standing up and the snow was falling and I first came out and I teased the story that Jessica Simpson is uh, quitting a job or whatever I said, did it in your mind you think, oh wait, no. Not, that, not those good clothes and those shoes. Nah, not that, the acting. I didn't even know she was an actress. Oh, that's right, she played Daisy Dukes. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's kind of refreshing to know this is not her natural size. You know, that a pretty girl like this, you just can't have it all, you gotta struggle. Cause she was this size for approximately five seconds, right? <laughs> Do you remember? And then she started gaining the weight back and then she had the babies. Anyway, she wants to strictly focus on being a businesswoman and a mom. And I think that's terrific. Would you look at this daughter? Look at her family. Look at her daughter Maxwell's hair. Look at her son's little Jordans. What a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful family. I'm glad that she's focusing. You know, um, the Jessica Simpson uh, business that she's got going on, all that stuff, it's a billion dollar business. Uh, she herself is worth over a hundred million dollars. Wow. She's not yet, I know. So, you know, you tell me what she's better off doing. Nobody wants to act. If you don't have to memorize the lines, fine. And that singing, nobody's buying those Jessica Simpson <laughs> CDs. You know, but I'll tell you what people are buying. The shoes, yeah. the handbags, all that stuff. She's the celebrity that nobody can hate. Like if you hate on Jessica Simpson, there's something wrong with you. Like something wrong with you. Anyway, goodbye Jessica Simpson's family. I wanna talk about Snooki. Oh. Well, she says her days may be numbered um, on reality TV. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying girl, nobody's watching that. Uh, Snooki says that she's uh, likely to say goodbye to reality TV at the end of this season of Snooki and JWoww, which by the way, that's on MTV, if, 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 you're, if you care. Um, she doesn't wanna raise her son Lorenzo with the cameras in his face. Fab, fabulous. I love that. That's the worst thing that a parent can do to their kid, raise him with the camera in their face and they, they Anyway, it's a terrible, terrible legacy to uh, burden your, your children with. Now, what will Snooki do for money, you ask? Well, stuff. <laughs> I mean, she's got a book coming out. This would be like her second or third book. Uh, she's got some sort of fragrance. Oh, um, oh my God. <laughs> Was that nonverbal for nobody wants to smell like Snooki? <laughs> I think she's got some slippers and she's got, like she's got stuff going on. 
she's got stuff going on. The point is, is that it is time for her to say goodbye to reality TV. It's time for all of them, to, all of them, every last channel that has it. It's time for you all to say goodbye to reality TV. I bet you Gwyneth Paltrow doesn't watch reality TV. I bet you she doesn't even own a TV. As a matter of fact, didn't we report once that she only has one TV in the house and she keeps it locked up? Yeah, yeah. And she has an occasional cigarette on a Saturday night. <laughs> well, remember I was telling you that, um, that she was battling Vanity Fair magazine because they were gonna do one of those takedown pieces. That's what they were calling it, a takedown piece. Sounds like it was gonna be juicy, right? <laughs> well, Gwyneth has been at war with the magazine and, and the, the magazine and editor, uh, Graydon Carter. That's money, right? Graydon Carter. That might have more of a money ring than Baron Trump. <laughs> Graydon Carter. Mm. And here's Graydon. And Graydon, everybody, every, Graydon was going to do this takedown piece and then Gwyneth started calling all of her A-list pals saying, look, when he calls you, don't answer the phone. If you wanna be my friend, if you still wanna be in my inner circle, I would imagine the conversation went, um, then you won't, you, then you'll boycott everything that this magazine has to offer. And her friends did. Now Vanity Fair is doing um, a piece on Gwyneth, but it's gonna be a much softer piece. Okay, soft schmoff. <laughs> Graydon, can you somehow hit the wrong button on your computer and just leak the story at Vanity Fair online? Yeah. I'll read it and give everybody the blow by blow. Because I couldn't imagine what Gwyneth Paltrow has to hide that hasn't already been talked about in tabloids unless well, I don't know. But Gwenny's got a secret and I wanna know what it is. Yeah. On a side note, jo so Johnny Depp, Depp and um, Gwyneth did a movie together. And reportedly, Johnny was saying that she was so annoying. I guess, you know, <laughs> following, following after him about her rules of life and use the gluten, not the fruit, and, and you know, <laughs> I, I guess how to take care of his kids and how to do his hair. And you know, she's like a, she's like a know-it-all. People have said that before. To, to know her is to be prepared to be bossed around by her. And Johnny just thought that she was the most annoying thing. She keeps very youthful though, doesn't she? Yeah. She, keeps, she keeps very youthful. A lot of times, you know, a fair-haired uh, white person, you know, you tend to wrinkle a little bit faster than like, <laughs> than a brunette white person. Uh, um, and, or somebody with a Mediterranean background or something. I mean, to be so alabaster and, and old, she's, she's in her 40s, she's 41. I think that she's got a very youthful presence. I won't even ask you, do you?